Good morning, folks. This is John Pettipa recording. It's 11 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, which is the second day of April 2022. Let me begin here by stating, please keep in mind, I make this video fully realizing that policing is a very difficult job. And there are many good police officers out there. And to those officers, I thank you and I admire you. But I can sincerely tell you I don't make this video lightly. And I'm going to digress here a second. When I seen a few weeks ago a headline, and I don't follow crime. I like news and politics and business and current events. I don't follow sensationalism, bullshit and gossip. But I saw a headline that the RCMP the union representing RCMP officers that were involved in the the tragedy of uh, that fateful Saturday night in April two years ago and Sunday morning. They didn't want to testify. And the quote was, because it would re-traumatize the officers. The quote was reached, and that just got me. I was thought in the moon. It will re How does the, the common law, French Napoleonic Code, British common law, American common law, uh, civil law, how do you investigate or do something if people don't testify? And so I make this video in but profound respect to the memory of the 23 people that died that fateful Saturday night and Sunday morning and their loved ones, and especially the loved ones. I'm going to not get emotional, but their loved ones. Just a piece of this morning's paper. I, I already have a video uploaded today. I made a couple of weeks ago. And I said, I'm going to do it for the sake of the 23 that are in heaven now, 23 that lost their lives, and their loved ones. Those loved ones, everyone, the Bond brothers, the O'Brien family, and there's numerous others, that they just then a snap a finger, say we're having a press conference at our scene headquarters, and they all gather in and the press is right there, the cameras and CTV and everybody. They have to fight to be heard. They have to fight to be heard. So again, I sincerely say that I don't make this video lightly, but I'm going to ask Constable Ian Fahey and Corporal Ivany that I read, I've heard of before and re read in the paper this morning, if the lady in this morning's paper, Heather O'Brien, was their mother, sister, or daughter. Would they be satisfied what happened to that lady as she laid there, ultimately died? Is that what they'd expect of attending officers? I'm going to repeat that. Constable Ian Fahey and Corporal Ivany. If the lady in that car was their wife or sister or daughter, Is that what they'd expect of attending officers? Now, we deserve to know what happened. Victim families, mother died hours after Mounties told EHS, that's Emergency Health Services in Nova Scotia, she's dead. Evidence that RCB officers gave to Nova Scotia mass shooting on Nova Scotia mass shooting victim, Heather O'Brien, when she was still alive, is hidden from the public, said the late woman's family. Goes on. The post says it includes computer data from Fitbit. Now, I'm not a tech guy. I didn't even know how to type 20 months ago. It's something called a Fitbit. Apparently, these people that are jogging or walking around a factory floor or warehouse or store want to know how far they've walked. And apparently, it monitors the heart and it goes into a computer. So the Fitbit, I'm not a techie guy, the Fitbit, the O'Brien lady was wearing the day of her death, 
shows her heart continued to beat several hours after she was pronounced dead by our senior officer. An interview with an editor Mountie, part of which parts of which are not included, are not included in the commission's summary of what happened, backs up the family's claim that the mother of six was left to die. And I seen a picture the other day and the uh, and the uh, little young child in his mother she was a beaten lady, and this other lady was, by all accounts, I don't know any of these people directly, she she was a loving, nice lady, and she she was always helping people, and she was LPN, and LPNs are just wonderful, licensed practical nurses. They're always helping people, and they actually do work and do something, get their hands dirty. They're wonderful people. Okay, they take a constable, Ian Fahey, was one of the first officers to arrive in the scene and attended to O'Brien. In a month that followed, he talked to the RCMP and the Mass Casualty Commission investigators about what happened. In his statement to commission investigators, he suggested that O'Brien had a pulse but was left to die because she was mortally wounded and there was no chance of surviving. And all I can say to read this morning, I have the word God. God. And I put here in my blue marker, God. Quote, so we, I say, we had to let her die. But you know, we had to let her pass on. And the quote stated, Fahey. The quote written to someone in Halifax is, So, I say, we had to let her die. But you know, we had to let her pass on. And the quote said, Fahey. I don't think, I don't think she was going to make it anyways. So we got a blanket, covered her up, and then we went to the road and got it. I repeat, this is what I'm reading today's Halifax Hill, Saturday, April 2nd, 2022, on page A3. I don't think she was going to make it. So we got a blanket, covered her up, and then we just went to the road and got it. Those particular details were not brought up in Thursday's commission hearings. Neither are included in commission's version of events on Plains Road. The commission, Plains Road, evidently is the road in which the, the lady died. Okay, was shot. Um, the commission's foundational documents do not mention the officers may have given up on O'Brien too soon. In their statement, the family said it was gobsmacked, gob, gobsmacked, gobsmacked by the commission's cho that the commission chose not to include this. In their statement, now this is the fine lady that died, Mrs. Heather O'Brien, has six kids, six surviving kids, and probably loads of grandkids and loved ones, in-laws, and so on. They were gobsmacked by the commission, that the commission chose not to include it. Once again, we're disappointed that the public is not getting information and instead being forced to read through thousands of documents to find anything, said the statement. Quote, it does not, if it does not fit their narrative, it is not published, end of quote. Our mother deserved better than this, and so do the people of this province. If it does not fit their narrative, if it is not published. Our mother deserves better than this, and so do the people of the province. Now, the bond ones, that's one I did read, and they seem so credible. Just regular guys could come in the store, somebody to meet or help you out, and they were so credible. Two brothers that lost both their parents, tragically. And they were so well-composed and calm and lucid logical in their testimony. We're, we're not human beings and we don't feel for them. I'm not trying to be dramatic. We're not human beings. We can't feel for the Bond brothers that testified about a week ago, week and a half ago, read this approximately, or the children of the, Mrs. Uh, Heather O'Brien. We go on at 10.28 a.m., 10 minutes after Ivany's first call, a constable de Coast 
the constable of coast. It doesn't say what the, the, the whoever man or woman constable of coast says. Radio the NHS, which is the emergency hospital service, which was nearby on exit 13, asked where the ambulance was needed. So whoever the constable of coast is had the good sense to ask to do it 10:28 a.m. Ten minutes after Ivany's first call, Constable Coast radioed to EHS that the EHS was nearby exit 13, asked where the ambulance was needed. Co Corporal Ivany indicated that the ambulance was not needed because the female was deceased. The family's post includes Fitbit data showing that O'Brien, Mrs. O'Brien, Heather O'Brien, maintained a steady heartbeat after being shot and that her heart did not stop for nearly eight hours. Two hours after emergency EHS, emergency health services, was told O'Brien was dead and about noon, her heart rate was at about 90 beats a minute. According to data uploaded her computer from her fitness watch. And it fluctuated, so it goes on. Anyway, the lady is still alive. And finally, as a key point, I'm going to conclude, I'm giving the words of the family. Quote, this is unacceptable work in every way, said the family. I quote the family member. This is unacceptable work in every way, said the family. And quote, we deserve the best chance to know what happened that day. And that's a key point. This is unacceptable work in every way, said the family. That's a quote. And next quote. I am rephrasing from Halifax Herald, quoting, we deserve the best chance to know what happened that day. And I don't make this lightly, and it's not a subject I normally deal with. And all I can suggest is that you read your Halifax Herald. If you don't subscribe, go out and buy a copy. It's today's Halifax Herald, Saturday, April the 2nd, 2022 on page 83. And this is John Pettypaw. And I normally conclude all the best and God bless. And God bless everybody. And we'll say a prayer for the surviving family and for the 23 victims that day. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth as is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And that's all I have to say. It's out of respect for the family. I can only, this got me thinking about this. I can only imagine what the, what the families of Mrs. Heather O'Brien, the Bond brothers, and there's numerous other ones. I'm not being disrespectful. There's a whole list of you, and I, I don't know anybody, um, any of them personally. And with that, but they're, they're wonderful people, and they're... I don't know what the story doesn't say enough, but I'm going to use the term, their story deserves to be told, and set of circumstances deserves to be fully aired and told. Thank you very much. Bye for now.